Hello and welcome to this episode 93 of Vokta Gaming. I am your host, the vocal terrorist, Jesse Rain, and I am coming to you live on twitch.tv forward slash Vokta Gaming for this, our second in the 2012 preview games, featuring, of course, our Blue Protoss MX5. And spawning on the east of Antigua Shipyard, he is the Red Zerg player, The Frozen. So, again, I want to just explain what's going on here. Voxy Gaming is a series I've been running for a while. Obviously, this is the 93rd episode. I was running it in 2011, mainly on YouTube, where essentially all I was doing was covering professional games, mostly Korean, sometimes European, sometimes North American, and just broadcasting them, uh, with, of course, my commentary over the top. What I'm doing this year, 2012, that will still be happening. Do not worry, that's not going away. That is always going to be there. It's so much fun for me to do. However, I'm working with a UK-based professional StarCraft II team called Team Carnage. Uh, who MX5 is, of course, one of the players for. And so I'm going to be focusing on broadcasting their tournaments, broadcasting their players as well on this stream. The Vokta Gaming, the pro, the Korean pro stuff, and all that kind of the show matches will still be on the YouTube channel, but this stream will be for any kind of tournaments I cover, any kind of Team Carnage-based stuff. That I do. Uh, we're going to do analysis of replays. Like I'll get guys like MX5 to come in and talk about their videos, talk about their replays, talk about their strategies. So that's going to be really, really fun. In the meantime, of course, I'm giving you a preview. That's going to run this week and next week, and then I go to India to see my wonderful, gorgeous fiance um, for the first time ever. <gasps> Scary, I know, but it's going to be awesome, so don't worry about it. Don't panic. I'm not panicking. You're not panicking. Don't like this from the Frozen, as uh, those people of you who are not new to me will know that I just I need Zergs to fast expand every single time. Uh, unless, of course, MX5 is being a dick with a, uh, a probe. If you put the pile on there, you're probably going to want to get a spawning pool, but if you'd gone 14 hatch, you'd have got it down anyway, so there you go. Um, there was something else. Oh, I wanted to address some criticisms. First of all, of course, um, I wanted to confirm that the YouTube channel isn't going away. That's still going to be there. I am recording these in the same format as I previously did, using Fraps at the same time as streaming it. So do not worry about that, as this little Zerg drone tries to hide behind the smoke. Sneaky, sneaky probe. And there we go. Probe with a pile on there. That pile on block of the hatchery is so annoying. Cancels it at the right second as well just delays it slightly, which is exactly what you want to do. Uh, the episode from yesterday, however, I must warn you, was lost completely forever. That will never appear on the YouTube channel unless someone rips it somehow from Twitch TV. Uh, and I'm sorry about that. It's a shame, but nonetheless, that's what's happened. As well, um, of course, some criticism has been given of my analysis. My analysis, I will hands up admit here, is terrible. I'm not a pro StarCraft 2 player, I'm a wrestling commentator who is now broadcasting esports. I do not have the in-depth knowledge that other guys can bring and that's definitely something I want to do in the future. I want to get guys like MX5 on when we're doing Team Carnage stuff, guys like Lemony Tang who also plays for them, um, to really get this kind of a decent analysis going. And of course I'd love to do some guest spots on Foxy Gaming as well if I can get some people to join me on uh, Skype or Mumble or whatever. That would also be really nice. So if you're watching and you think you're a good broadcaster, a good commentator, give me a shout. Uh, you can find me on Skype at jesse.rain or you can send me an email at foxygaming at gmail.com. Anyway, I'm completely done talking about myself and my channel now because this game is going to pick up fairly shortly, I imagine. As we see, we have two gates here and a third gate there. That is three gates. Still no expand yet from MX5. I'm fine with that. Three gate is perfectly acceptable opening. He's not going to four gate. He's not going to go into any serious pressure. He's just going to get sentries out and a zealot for defense. That's perfectly fine. 
I am definitely okay with that. By the way, I apologise if this is lagging slightly for anyone else. I'm going to do my best to fix that tomorrow. Yeah, I'm going to play about with it. I'm not working tomorrow, so I have the whole day to kind of mess about with XSplit and make everything work perfectly. That's another reason for the 2012 preview, by the way. Is to get all the bugs out, basically. Um, so that when I start streaming properly and professionally in February 2012, February of this year, as MX5 gets a Nexus up, the Zergings are going to harass, potentially force a cancel, but I shouldn't think so. There is enough here to hold them off. Not even wasting force fields. Very nice there from MX5. But yes, yeah, so that when I start professionally broadcasting in February, this stream will be perfect. Everything will be fine. Getting a forge now, I am not against that at all. I think that's perfectly fine. I'm going to say that for everything MX5 does. I like MX5's play. And he's one of the reasons I decided to, to put my name forward for Team Carnage Broadcaster. MX5 is, of course, uh, for those of you who didn't watch yesterday, and of course many of you on the YouTube will not have seen this, uh, his real name is Martin Cross, he's 16 years old, he ranked 16th at I-44, one of the huge UK lands that go on, and he was beaten by Stefano in the IPL qualifiers. So that is that is a pretty good record for a 16 year old who only started playing like in June. You are picking up Hallucination, interestingly enough. From the cybernetics core. Hmm. Uh, for those of you who don't know, because it is so rarely used, that allows sentries to essentially create fake units. It can be any any unit you can think of in the Protoss uh, vocabulary, of course. They can create a fake one of it. Doesn't do any damage, but it looks real to the opponent. They can be used in many ways. Quite often, just used for scouting. You hallucinate a phoenix or two, get them to fly over the enemy base. And you can also, of course, force the opponent to make spores without actually needing to make spores. So, we have spine crawlers burying right at the front of the Frozen's base. He's working so far just on two base, even at eight and a half minutes into the game. Uh, he does have layer tech up. That's obviously good. If you're going to stay two base, you need to be teching fast. That's the way as a spire goes up here. And here we have, yet yeah, the fake phoenix as predicted. Queen's there, trying to kill it, but of course gets all the scouting he needs to, so that is fine. And here we go, finally, the Frozen expanding to a third base and a fourth base at the same time. I like this. It's very hard to defend two new bases at the same time, but putting two up means if he discovers this one, quite often he won't even think that this one's here. You'll think, oh, that's the right expand timing for a third, and therefore you will not find the hidden fourth. Meanwhile we have a roach warren going up for the frozen so he's going to go pretty roach heavy I should imagine. Now this phoenix spots this base uh, the frozen it looks like will continue it to completion. Whether The question is whether MX5 will go attempt to probe it. He may as well because as you saw there were no units there whatsoever so it's worth a poke. However on Antigua shipyards this is easily defended. Until this destructible debris go down you can do a lot of damage. Um, sorry, you can hold this very well by holding this choke point here. Now we have the first pylon going down here. That's a forward pylon there from MX5. Those stalkers are being surrounded by Lynx. But good force field saves them. The probe going in there, dropping another pylon now at the base of that ramp. And interestingly, moving the spine crawlers forward, but not using the Lynx to take out that probe before the pylon was finished. Instead now, that upper pylon is going to get done if he doesn't realise. And now, moving forward, attacking into spine crawlers and links. Links doing a lot of damage, but hallucinating a lot of sentries to tank damage. That is absolutely brilliant by MX5. Why make zealots when you can just hallucinate them instead? The links wasting so many hits on units that aren't even really there. And the spine crawlers both go down. This is a really nice attack now from MX5. He's definitely going to take this base down. Meanwhile, the Frozen needs to get some units out. He needs to get these roaches finished. 14 roaches on the way, but meanwhile, we have Protoss Ground Armor Level 1 coming. Ground Weapons Level 1 is already finished, so he has the upgrades. And now that hatchery does fall for the Frozen, and he finds himself supply blocked. It's not going to matter too much, because of course those roaches were already in production. <coughs> oh, I do apologise. I am very, very sick, by the way. 
I've been ill for a while now and it's just getting worse rather than better. Also getting that fixed in February. And this is nice from MX now, just going home. You move out, you do damage, you go home and you defend and you potentially expand as well. But now Ling's running in here, only one cannon within range of the Ling's and he's going to do a lot of damage. The second one is not going down there, in fact that is a pylon. So in fact this cannon entirely out of range of those links. The links now though do move into range of it. Going to try and sneak right into the main base. Which they fail to do because of a nicely tied wall from by MX5. And the links are going to be trapped. He's going to lose all of them now. There we go. Stalker's taking them down as the ground armor level 1 finishes. We have a robo facility on the way. The question is will he go for Colossus in his versus Zerg? Or will he in fact choose to go High Templar instead? I'd like to see that from him. I'd like to see Immortal High Templar. I'm really, really digging that lately. Meanwhile, we have Pathogen Glands. That's the starting energy for the Infesta. And Glial Reconstitution. That's the movement speed for Roaches. So it looks like the Frozen is going to be going Roach Infesta. Does move forward now to take out these pylons. Should have done that a while ago, but of course, perfectly fine. It just means that MX knows he hasn't taken this base yet. And now the Roaches do spot this second pylon, so unfortunately that is not going to stay hidden. Sorry, MX. Here we have again Hallucinated Phoenix is scouting about. We have pylons being dropped. That's really nice for MX5. Now he's going to see that this base is up. So, of course, we'll potentially put pressure on there, or we'll attempt to draw forces away. With the pylon here, you can always wait until these leave. Nice showing the pile on here. What that means is that dies. But he may well not notice this one on account of it being on the high ground. In fact, does not know it is there yet. So I can warp in four zealots down here and have them just run in and see how much damage they can do. They can kill a lot of drones and even take down a hatchery if the Zerg player is caught out of position. Especially since he's not going mutas. Since he's going roach infested, that is not the fastest moving army in the world. So it can be very, very vulnerable to drop harass. I like this Overlord placement, by the way. Allows him to see these two minerals, so he knows just roughly how mined out the main base is of MX-5. Meanwhile, the Frozen is re-expanding to that location, the one he previously lost. Unfortunately, the Roaches have found this upper pylon now. So the three Zealots will finish warping in, only warping in three rather than four. And meanwhile, we have a huge Roach Infestor army moving out. And it's going to meet head-on with MX-5's Immortal Sentry Stalker mix. A huge engagement here. Decent force swords keep the Infestors away. Fungals do go down and do cause some damage, but not enough. And MX-5 definitely got the better of that, forcing the Frozen to retreat. And now MX-5 is going to take down this debris and give him an easy route into the Frozen's fourth base. Not incredibly good creep spread from the Frozen, by the way. He's barely connecting his bases and really is not getting anywhere on the map at all. Especially with no observer out from MX-5 as far as I can see. He really should be doing a lot better there. And now Force Field in the ramp. The Roaches can't get up. So he can take down this hatchery or at least force a cancel before the Roaches can get in. And they're not going to try to flank. So that hatchery does go down. Meanwhile... What a nice advantage that is for MX-5. MX-5, though, once again, supply blocks because of losing those pylons down at the bottom of the map. But now a huge engagement again. Fungal growth going down, but Infestors doing... Sorry, Immortals doing so much damage to the Roaches. They just tear through Roaches like they're not even there. It's fantastic to see. And this is just a great mix right now. Another Immortal coming to reinforce. A great mix from MX-5 here to take down the Infestor Roach army. And in fact, he is going to absolutely slaughter this. Hallucinated Void Rays now. Just to make the Frozen retreat. The Frozen has no idea what kind of tech he's up against right now. Seeing fake Void Rays again can force him to do more and more spores in his base that he just doesn't actually need. These overlords are going to go down. It's not that important. But of course, rebuilding them does cost money. He's nowhere near supply blocks quite yet though. He has plenty of time to get the last ones up, but these overlords are not moving away fast enough. I know he is supply block, which could have became a problem, become a problem rather, but he's going to lose a lot of forces here. 
Now, Fungal Growth's going down again, but Immortals again doing the damage here. Only one Immortal left. It's nearly dead. MX5 is going to continue to push into the base of the Frozen and try and do some real damage here. I don't know if this is entirely wise. Whether or not he should have pulled back earlier when he had the advantage. Now, in fact, he's going to lose the Immortal and lose quite a few Stalkers. Zealot's being walked into reinforced, but not enough of them. One Observer out now for MX5 is able to scout, but all it's going to see is his retreating forces. Again, though, Creep Spread being lost there because of that Observer, which is very, very nice. Meanwhile, though, Pylon there is going to go down, but MX5 is perfectly fine right now, and this is what I like to see off him. There was a decent attack, maybe pushed slightly too far with it, but he's getting a Twilight Council up now. And I assume he's going to get Blink. Um, I think Blink would be the best in this situation. Some people might go for Charge, but I think Blink would be best right now. He has a lot more Stalkers than he has Zealots. In fact, does he have any Zealots at all right now? Not there that I can see. So yeah, it looks like Blink is going to come out of this Twilight Council. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a... Um, what do they call them? Templar Archives. Just for... The, uh, the High Templar, Archons even, Archons very good against big clumped up roaches. Spinecrawler's settling down on creep, but of course that creep is going to disappear very, very shortly, so I'm not too sure what the Frozen was thinking. He has one Spinecrawler here that isn't even burrowed, because of course there is no creep. Question, do Spinecrawlers take damage once they're off creep, or are they alright? I have absolutely no idea. I should learn that. I should be a better broadcast. I should know everything about the game. Here we go. The Frozen is trying to retake that fourth base. And holy shit, he lost the base down here. And I totally missed it because I was going off on a tangent. Huge apologies there. This is all very new to me. And I'm definitely not feeling at my best today. I'm barely able to see the minimap as it is. My eyes are blurry. But I'm going to stop talking about myself. It's okay. So all you need to know is he lost that base down here. Sometime pretty recently from the looks of it because the creep is still there. I do apologise for that. Blink is going down as is Silent Storm, so it looks like High Templar is going to be made, not just Archons, if he's going to get Storm. Of course, Silent Storm, good for forcing Roaches to back off. Also, uh, feedback, very nice for killing Infestors. Yes, Infestor is the word. Jesus, my brain isn't functioning. Oh, thank God this is just the 2012 preview and not the start of my actual professional broadcasting for Team Carnage, or I would lose my friggin' job. Anyway, we have this huge roach force coming in now, supported only by a few lings and an overseer. No infestors there at all. So that is not the best, I'm thinking, from the Frozen. Meanwhile, MX5 is trying to get this base up here, but the Frozen is going to attack the debris. MX5 does know about it. He's close enough to see that, and of course, the observer's following. So he's going to try and flank from behind. I don't know if that's the best idea, but it looks like it's going to work. One completely pointless force field in the middle of the ramp, but never mind. These roaches are forced to back off now, taking a ton of damage. And the Stalkers blink forward to get a couple more kills. Very, very nice there. MX5 does retreat, however. He does not want to be caught out of position by anything else. I keep looking here to see what this is, but it turns out it's just a ton of overlords dropping creeps. So you can put spine crawlers forward to defend that third location now. Now that his uh, his initial third has gone down. So it'll be interesting to see where the players go from here. MX-5 is upgrading still. Ground weapons level 2 is about to be finished. Then I imagine ground armor level 2 will be next. Everything kind of at a standstill. MX-5 is just trying to secure this base right now. Once he does that and his economy will shoot forth again which is exactly what he needs. He needs a lot more gas, he needs more minerals, he wants to make more immortals. In fact, getting the robotics base, so it looks like perhaps even a Colossus switch, which I, would, I don't have a problem with now. I think it's at that stage of the game, I think Colossus would help to do damage to this clumped up army. Their splash is, of course, brilliant. I'd love to see just more Archons, because, you know, Archons are Archons. These Speedlings now are going to come into this base, though, see what they can kill. Unfortunately, there's nothing here, really, apart from the Nexus... But all the probes are being transferred. They could have been taken down, but MX-5 is on top of it. His stalkers are going to take down these lings very, very shortly. And in fact, burrows the lings very nicely.
because of course he has researched Burrow now. MX5 of course is going to know they're there so he's not just going to leave them. Just going to wait for the Observer to get there wherever it is. Where on the map are you Observer? I do not know. I potentially lost it in that last engagement. Although I'm not sure how as none of his units could shoot up. Meanwhile Ling's unburrowed because the Rogue Force is moving in. Nice wall off though. He is going to get taken down but it just delays them slightly. Allows his army to move into a flanking position. And of course shuts down that attack so that is a nicely timed move by MX5. Okay he's definitely going Colossus because extended thermal lance is on the way. Meanwhile, the Frozen's crew spread manages to get actively worse the longer the game goes on. MX5 again blinking forward with those stalkers. It's always nice getting just a few more kills. The Frozen's still failing to be quite maxed out, despite the fact he had three bases. There are no minerals here, and in fact there are droves just sitting here doing absolutely no ball. He should be transferring them just to somewhere else, even just making spine crawlers out of them, doing something with them rather than just having them sit there, but his multitasking is clearly not quite up to the case. It took him a long time to notice that. Meanwhile, Zerg Missile Attack to level 1 is on the way. That is, of course, the attack upgrade that will help the Roaches out. If we look at this Roach army here, that should finish very, very shortly. Finally, some Infestors back in the mix. Fungals will help to control those Stalkers will stop him from blinking forward to chase him down at the very least. Roaches are scary looking by the way. I've just noticed that. That is creepy as all hell. And we have a hive now on the way for the Frozen. Interestingly he got that spire up but then never did anything with it. No mute harass. No corruptors. Obviously no corruptors because why would you do that? So it looks like the only reason he got it up was to essentially go into Broodlords in the late game. So that was a very much late game idea. Although I'm not sure entirely why you do that. Perhaps if he'd kept his bases up, he'd intended to go further Muta. But I think Muta Harass could have been quite nice while MX5 was clearly on the move with his army. But of course, Blink Stalker armies are very mobile. They can chase down Harasses quite nice. So whether or not that was a good idea, I will leave up to you to decide. Meanwhile, Protoss Ground Weapons level 3 is on the way. That is going to finish up in just a little while. We have Zerg Missile Attacks level 2. So the Frozen is going full on for those Roach upgrades. We have him retaking this base down here now. He really needs to because his mineral situation is getting dire. Hardly any minerals there. No minerals here. So all he's got is this one base here so far. Taking that and now taking the bottom as well. A risky move. Meanwhile MX5 taking the gold. Not even uh, his side of the map. But he's going to take this bottom gold instead, and why the hell not? When you have control of the center like this, you may as well make use of the gold bases that are there. That is a very, very nice touch from him. Now it looks like he's just going to move in. It looks like we're going to have a pretty much a death ball army. Immortal sentries, stalkers, and colossus coming in to do damage. Spine crawlers were trying to go up. But of course they are all being taken down immediately so they are not going to help at all. And now we have Stalkers and Colossus versus Roach. We have a few Immortals. Roach Infester now. In fungal, fungals rather going down from the Infestors. I do apologise about this lag once more. This is the last time I'll mention it. But I will fix it by tomorrow I promise. And now Archons killing everything in sight. These Infestors are retreating but retreating forward. It looks like a last ditch effort now by the Frozen, but I just don't think it's going to happen. Stalkers are blinking forward to do even more damage. This Colossus does come out and he's going to get caught. We have two Colossus coming out, getting caught, getting fungled. One will go down, but the Stalkers coming in doing even more damage. Colossi coming in to help, and the Frozen's army is dwindling. Supply count is nearly the same, but MX5's units are just more cost effective. And the Frozen is going to lose this engagement badly. Now his supply falls. It plummets to the ground. Below 100 now. MX5 barely losing any units here. And now these Infestors are going to die. There is not a lot the Frozen can do to come back from this. MX5 has taken out the army. He can walk right into the main now. And do whatever he feels like. Because there is just nothing to stop him. And the Frozen has left the game without even a GG. 
How rude. And MX5 takes game two of the 2012 preview week. Okay. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I will be back tomorrow at 7pm on twitch.tv forward slash Gaming, where we'll have the last of MX5 games this week, which will of course be, if you've guessed the theme, Protoss vs Protoss. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you all next time.